Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where if you're new to my show, my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to help you live longer, healthier, more abundant lives. And guys, I've got an amazing show today for you because this is something that is going to affect everyone in our lives at some point. So this is something that we need to just get a grasp of, understand how this works, and really figure out how we're going to beat this because one-third of us, okay, one out of every three people in this country is going to die of cancer. So if we don't get a handle on this and figure out exactly what is causing this and how to beat it, we are going to fall victim to this. And I want you to think hard of anybody that you know that hasn't had their lives turned upside down because of the tragedy of cancer, whether it be yourself, a family member, someone you work with, someone at your church, it virtually affects all of us. So I want you to share this information out with virtually everyone you know, because I'll tell you what, this information that you're going to learn today is going to be life-saving, all right? So you want to make sure you save it, I mean, uh, share it out, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, text it to somebody, just get the information out, because this will be transformational. And that is really just how can the keto lifestyle affect cancer? Can it actually prevent it? Can it reverse it? And the answer to this is yes. So I want to talk specifically about some science today because if you know this, you can really, really finally get a grip on cancer and really don't be the victim of it. So what I want to touch on right away is this is something that has affected my life. And like I said earlier, think of someone whose life hasn't been turned upside down by this. Well, this turned my life upside down when in 1989 my mom got diagnosed with lung cancer. By the time they found it, it had spread from her lungs to her brain, it was in her hip, it was in her knee, it was virtually everywhere in her body. And I watched my best friend, a person who I adored the most, go from about 135 pounds to about 75 pounds. Lost all of her hair because of the chemo. It was just absolutely destroying her body, destroying her immune system. She had to have uh, different valves put in so that way she can get the chemo in because it wasn't getting in through the arteries. They were just collapsing. And she had radiation that was shot through her chest over here where they drew with Sharpie a bullseye. And I watched my best friend just deteriorate. And the thing that broke my heart the most is, is watching her go and do everything she was told to do. And so many of you out there have been told that chemo is the only way to go. Radiation is the only way to go. I'm going to give you some different options today. And it's up to you whether you want to choose to go with them or go the conventional route. I'm not telling you what to do, but just give you some different options. Now, like I said, if I knew what I knew today, I can honestly believe in my heart of hearts that my mom would still be alive because I would have taken a completely different course. She did everything she was told to do by the doctors and it just literally destroyed her health, destroyed her body, and she lost the battle at 51 years old uh, within 11 months. So it was, it was quick. So anyway, let's jump right into this. So the first thing I wanna talk about is genetics. So many of us think it's a genetic issue. Well, you know what? Why should I bother taking care of myself? Why should I bother eating right or exercising? You know what? It, I'm doomed anyway. Everybody in my family gets cancer. Everyone gets heart disease. So why bother? I'm just going to eat whatever I want. I'm just going to live it up because you know what? My days are numbered anyway. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's the furthest thing from the truth. You actually have a lot of control over your genetic expression. What most people don't realize, and this was proven through the science of epigenetics, and many of you have never heard of this, and this will be the first time you're hearing about it, but epigenetics is the science that really teaches us how there's something above the genome. So epi means above, and genome means genetics. So epigenetics means that the choices you make can actually change your genes and those of your kids. So yes, you do have control over your genes. Your genes are just a blueprint, but your lifestyle, the way you live, the way you eat, the way you think, can actually resequence your genes. It can actually change how your genes are expressed. You might have the genes for cancer, but it doesn't mean they're ever gonna get turned on unless your lifestyle turns it on. So this is something that we see that can greatly affect the outcome of a case in knowing that you can actually change how your genes are expressed. Now that's huge. You don't hear that anywhere else. And my patients do so much better. I've actually had a 28 year record of, of being in practice for 28 years and I've never lost a single patient to cancer. And I really truly believe it's because of what we teach our patients to do. What to avoid and what better options are. And one of the biggest proponents, one of the biggest uh, 
doctors in the world when it comes to looking at cancer as a metabolic disorder instead of more a genetic disorder. More doctors today are looking at it like it's a metabolic disorder of how our body is working on the inside, especially the mitochondria, is a doctor named Thomas Seafried. Dr. Seafried is a doctor of neurogenetics and neurochemistry at Yale University, and he's one of the foremost leading experts in the world when it comes to cancer as a metabolic disorder. And what he talks about is this. He says, when you take the genes, okay, take the DNA or the nucleus from a cancer cell, and you actually transplant it into a healthy cell, the cell will stay healthy. It has nothing to do with the DNA just because you take the actual brains. Now think about this. You take the actual brains, the DNA of a, of a cancer cell, and you input it, you insert it into the cytoplasm of a normal cell, okay? You change the nucleus. You would think that that normal cell should turn cancerous, but it does not. It does not at all. And so he says you actually get normal tissue and sometimes a whole normal organism from the nucleus of a cancer cell. So what it turns out is it's more based on our environment and how these genes are being expressed. So that's huge, guys, because what that tells you is this. You can change your environment and change whether you actually ever get cancer or not, even if you have the genes for it. And this was seen by a doctor named Bruce Lipton, who taken the DNA out of cells for years and actually it's called enucleation and putting it into other cells and seeing how these cells perform and react. And he found the same thing, that you could take the cells, the, the genes and the DNA out of a cancer cell, put it into a normal cell, and it does not change the cell. The cell goes on to become a normal cell. What we also see is this, and one of the pioneers back in the 20s, Dr. Otto Warburg, won a Nobel Prize for this back in 1931, where he discovered how a cancer cell works, how it goes through its process of respiration, how it, what it uses for fuel. And what he found was this, the cancer cells use a high amount of sugar to be able to do its activities, that it utilizes sugar rather than fats for fuel. He said normal body cells meet their energy needs by respiration of oxygen or oxygenation. The difference is cancer cells don't work like that. Cancer cells are anaerobic cells. They don't like oxygen. They don't want it around. Normal healthy cells use oxygen. It's called aerobic. You maybe have experienced this when you're in a workout and you're going through the workout and you breathe normally and it's, a, it's exertive enough that you don't have to gasp for air. That is what we call an aerobic workout. If you're gasping for air, it means you're short on oxygen. Your body's tissue cells and lungs are not getting enough oxygen. It becomes anaerobic. So cancer cells are anaerobic. Not only that, they don't use oxygenation or oxidation as a fuel source. What they use instead is the fermentation of sugars. Now, guy, that's huge because when you look at cancer cells, as a completely different type of cell that requires sugar for fuel, then you can starve it by taking its sugar away. What we see is that cancer cells have upwards of 70 times more receptor sites for insulin than any other type of cell in the body. So if you think of the cell as this little factory with all these antenna outside that are looking for sugar, it's got more antenna looking for sugar than any other type of cell in the body. So it's got more of these insulin receptor sites than any other type of cell. So what happens is they depend on anaerobic metabolism of sugar once again. So if we start to realize that by changing our diet, changing our lifestyle, getting away from a sugar diet, which is what we call the standard American diet or the sad diet, some people even call it the stupid American diet, we can actually change how cells are metabolizing and we can actually kill off or starve cancer cells. What they find is, and I told this to a patient of mine back probably about five years ago when she came in with cervical cancer, I said what they're going to do is they're going to inject a radioactive sugar solution with it. And she couldn't believe it. She's like, no, Dr. Nick, that's crazy. That makes no sense. I said, what you're going to find is that's exactly what they're going to do. So when they do a PET scan or positron emission tomography, what they find is this. They use this nuclear radiation type material injected into your body with a sugar solution. So it's injected as sugar because your cancer cells will suck up all the sugar. So then they can use the scanner to actually see where those cells are because they're going to glow from all the sugar. So what we find is the small amount of radioactively marked sugar is injected into the body and those organs and tissues which have the cancer cell, they will actually consume the sugar. So we see that right over here 
in this person's liver. There's cancer cells here and cancer cells here. Now the kidneys are going to absorb some of that material, so they will glow, but it's not because of the cancer. But the cancer cells are right here and here. And they're in there just sucking up all this sugar. So what we also find is tumors consume up to 30 times more sugar than normal tissue. So these are just sugar lovers. I call them, you know, just they're just beasts for sugar yet normal cells don't have to be. And that's really where we can beat this, is understanding that normal cells can process fats, abnormal cells, cancer cells cannot, and they rely on the fermentation process or sugar. So what Dr. Seafried went on to say, he says cancer cells need glucose to thrive. They have to have it. It's their only fuel source. Lowering glucose levels in your body through carb and protein restriction literally starves the cancer cells into oblivion. And that's the key right there. If we can change our diet, once again, I'm not trying to beat this up, but this is how simple it is. You starve the cancer cells by taking sugar out of your diet, and sugars in the form of grains, in the form of potatoes, and rice, and starches, that's all sugar. It doesn't just have to be candy bars and things like that. It's not just Twix and Snickers and so on. It comes in the form of any kind of sugars, whether it be a simple carbohydrate or a more complex carbohydrate. Eliminating all but non-starchy vegetables, carbohydrates, and replacing them with healthy fats and high quality protein. That's what we're looking to do. So eliminating all but non-starchy vegetables. So you don't want those big, big, heavy starchy vegetables and you want to take out the sugar. Eating this way will help you convert, now there's that word again, convert from a sugar burner into a fat burner. And that's really what the ketogenic diet is all about. So the ketogenic diet benefits cancer patients because it converts them from sugar burners to fat burners. Our body runs fine off of fat, but cancer cells cannot. So what are we looking at here? Once again, if you're new to keto, this is really what it's about. It's about high fats, moderate proteins, and low carbs. Not no carbs, but low carbs. So percentage-wise, you're looking at 75% of your calories for the day should be from fat, about 25% of your calories from protein, and about 5% are from carbs. So let's look at the types of fats we're talking about here. Eggs are a tremendous fat, excellent source of fat. I had a patient the other day ask me, you know, so how many egg whites should I be eating? I'm thinking, why, why are you asking about the egg whites? You should be having the yolks too, so eat the yolks also. I know you're worried about cholesterol, but don't worry about that. In fact, go back and watch one of my videos I did on what's the real truth about cholesterol. I explain it all out, what HDL is and LDL and so on. So don't worry about this. Don't worry about your cholesterol by picking up your fats. Olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, butter, some cheeses, okay? A lot of times patients and, and a lot of viewers will say to me, well, you're not so big on cheese and dairy. Well, because cheese and dairy can be very inflammatory, okay? So you want to make sure that it's grass-fed, hopefully not pasteurized, or, and uh, in its raw form, it's going to be the best. Harder cheeses are better. So you want to use that. But I just would not be eating cheese every single day, nor do I want to make it part of my diet, you know, where it's the major part. A lot of people are just living off of cheese and bacon. That's my problem I have with cheese. Other than that, you can have some. Enjoy it. It's okay. But you want to get into healthy, quality fats. Meats. All right, once again, I did a video the other day on, a, uh, of all things, salmon with a cream sauce. So there we go for that. You can see it. But you want healthy salmon. You want grass-fed meats. And once again, a lot of times I get viewers say to me, well, this sounds expensive. If I can't get grass-fed or organic, you know, should I not even bother doing this? And the answer is no. Just by converting to this type of lifestyle, this type of eating plan, you're going to really benefit from it. So healthy quality meats, chicken, poultry, and so on. Any of the meats are good, once again, 20% of your, of your daily calories. Carbohydrates, you want your non-starchy vegetables, just like Dr. Seafried said, your non-starchy vegetables, okay? So your, your cruciferous vegetables, your kale, your bok choy, your cauliflower, your Brussels sprouts, things like that. You want to make sure you're eating your green leafy vegetables, and you can eat as much as you want of them because they're virtually zero calories. Well, not zero. I'm joking, but they're about 100 calories per pound, so you can eat a ton of this stuff. Just make sure you add healthy fats to it, like, you know, whether it be ghee or just grass-fed butter or almond, uh, not almond, um, avocado oil, things like that. Put it all over your vegetables. Olive oil, drizzle it on your vegetables. Plenty of great salads you could put together with great cabbage and so on. And then, of course, your your fruits. Now you can have some fruit on it, but basically you want to make sure they're low glycemic fruit like your berries. So that's what you want to stick to with that. Now, last thing I want to say about this 
is if you really want to turbocharge your results, there's one more thing you really need to add to this to get the full benefit of being able to beat cancer or reverse it or at least minimize it and give your body the best fighting chance and that is with something we call intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is one of the things that people have done through centuries, the millennium. We've been doing this for thousands of years. Fasting has always been part of our lifestyle, whether it be through, through biblical reasons or spiritual reasons or just because you want to give your body time to cleanse out. But one of the great things about how fasting works is it triggers something called autophagy. And what autophagy is, and many of you have maybe heard me talk about this before, autophagy is where your body starts to look around at old, worn out cells, cells that are just really damaged, that are useless, that are just taking up space, and it scavenges, it scavenges them. So it really does a great job at taking the components of these cells, breaking it down, reusing it, and just getting rid of old, worn out cells. It's like cleaning the body out. And that's one of the best things it can do is it turbocharges the immune system, growth hormone is increased, and your body is just, the immune system is so much more stronger when you do intermittent fasting. And one of the benefits of the ketogenic diet is that it mimics intermittent fasting because of the fact that you're eating in a smaller window and you're eating things that are more satiating and eating things that will fill you up, obviously. You tend to then go into where your body starts burning ketones for fuel, which is a much cleaner fuel source than carbohydrates. And this is, you know, exactly what your body needs. So intermittent fasting will turbocharge your results. Now, once again, how do we do that? We have a smaller eating window. So typically, most people do it this way. You could do it any way you want, depending on your schedule. But most people do intermittent fasting like this. They will stop eating around 8 o'clock at night and not eat until about noon the next day. And that's just that simple. So if you want coffee in the morning, just make sure you have it without cream or sugar. I like to have it black with maybe something like Truvia in it or Stevia, things like that, erythritol, something that's a zero or low calorie. You want to make sure it's low calorie, I mean no calorie uh, type of sweetener. So no heavy cream, no bulletproof coffee. That will break your fast. That's not what we want to do. But uh, So anyway, guys, like I said, change your body. In a nutshell, let's summarize this now. Change your body from a sugar burner to a fat burner. Why? Well, it's going to help with your hormones and everything else, but from a cancer standpoint, it starves the cancer. Cancer cannot live on fats. It loves sugar. The fermentation process and an anaerobic process of burning up sugar for fuel, you take the sugar away, you take away its fuel source, you take away its food, your body's going to be healthier by it. You convert fats much better and that's what your healthy cells will do. It really comes down to the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse inside a cell, is damaged, okay? It's damaged in cancer, but works really well on fats in a regular cell. So guys, I hope this is great information for you. Please, like I said, everybody you know has been affected by cancer. It turns everyone's lives upside down, not just the person afflicted with it. So please share this information out to them, whether you put it on their Facebook page, text them, just, you know, get it out somehow. So once again, guys, I hope you love this information. Please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and you subscribe. Thanks so much for keeping our channel growing. It's literally growing by thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers, and I love you for that. So anyway, thanks so much. I love it. Appreciate you. Have a great day. This is Dr. Nick. Bye-bye.